What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler, a true banger of a video. Today we're talking about the time that I hit a lick. I may or may not have robbed somebody, we'll get into that, but either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like if you do. Also, sell out moment baby, if you guys want to get a free $5 just by using your phone and downloading an app, all you have to do is download the app Dosh, link will be in the description below at the very top, click that link, download the app on your platform whether it's Android or iOS, and then link an eligible debit card, it has to be a debit card if I remember correctly, I don't think it can be credit. And after that, you'll get your free $5. You don't have to pay a single cent. It will never charge you any money. There are no fees involved. It's a cashback app. So when you go to places that have eligible offers like Chili's or Best Buy and you spend, let's say, $100, you'll get 5 to 10 bucks back on that $100 purchase just for doing what you were going to do anyways. It's an awesome app. I use it personally. And big thank you to everybody who's downloaded and registered on the app. And also... There's like 90 of you guys who have downloaded it but haven't linked your card. It tells me that on the referral page. So if you have it downloaded, please do double check that you've actually linked your card and gotten your five bucks. Because, hey, we both get five bucks out of this, all right? That's, that's a little fucking blunt right there. That's a little free blunt right there. But either way, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So a couple things I want to say to preface this story. First off, I want to say that this happened in the crackhead phase of my life, right? This happened in the phase where... I didn't give a fuck. Like, I just didn't care about anything. And I was also a huge piece of shit. And also, the victim of this robbery here, his name was Paul. And Paul was a guy who was pretty much universally disliked by everybody. Like, and for good reason. It wasn't universally disliked because, like, he was a little bit irritating or, like, because, you know, he was a little weird. He was disliked because he was an absolute fucking dickbag to everybody. Like, I mean, literally everybody everybody. This guy was just a dick. He loved to talk shit about people's weed. He loved to talk shit about people in general. And he he was just a big mouth, all mouth. That's all this guy did. So he really had it coming to him. So if I didn't do it, someone else would have. And I, I'm pretty sure a few people did after me. But either way, what ended up happening on this night was... I remember it was about two years ago, and I want to say it was like maybe October or November, because I remember I was in my coat, it was a little chilly out, and I'm sitting in my car with my boy Kevin, and you know, we're, we're kind of having a slow night. We only had a couple grams of weed on us, maybe two, two and a half if I'm pushing it here, and we, we were trying to get a little bit of extra money to get some more shit going, you know, whether that be some tabs or whatever the fuck it was. We were trying to do something, you know, we were trying to do anything that we could do to pass some time here. And on some tabs, actually. I don't think at this point I was quite at my acid phase yet, but we were trying to get money to get some food or do some shit, right? And we were struck because we were broke idiots at this phase in our lives. So, you know, I'm just kind of sitting in my car with them swiping through Snapchat and... I noticed that Paul posted a story, you know, and I, I ran my brain dry of ideas to make money. You know, I thought like, could we steal some liquor and sell it? No, you know, everyone I hit up didn't want any liquor. You know, could we uh, maybe get fronted and flip it, you know, immediately that night and just make a little pretty penny? No, you know, I didn't really want to incur some debt and take a risk like that. Because knowing me, I'd probably just smoke that shit at that point in my life, you know, so fuck that. So... You know, Paul posting a story that said, hit me up if you got loud, was like a literal godsend. I was like, oh my god. It's like it's like a light bulb just exploded in my cranium. I was like, this is it, dude. This is the move. So I, I, you know, I message him, and I'm like, yo, how much you need? He replies to me, he's like, yo, I just need an eighth, you know, can you, can you bring it to me? And I'm like, yeah, I got you, where you at? So... He slides me his address. I'm like, all right, that'll be 40 if that's cool. He's like, Gucci, no problem. Let me know when you're here. So I was like, all right, it'll be like 30 or 40 minutes. So I show this to Kevin and I'm like, dude, should we just fucking stay in this guy? Cause like, I don't even, we don't even have an eighth to sell this guy. So like, it's either we bail on him and just stay in this scenario or we try to finesse him. And the consensus was between us both that, yeah, we're going to finesse this fucking guy. So what we ended up hatching out as our little plan here was we were going to take a little bit of bud and put it in the glove box, right? The little bit that we had, bag it up, put it in the glove box, right? And we were going to show that to him, let him look at it. We were only going to put like a gram in one of the bags, maybe a 10 sack, just as a sample. And then what we were going to do is after we got his money, we were going to tell him that the rest of the bud was in the trunk, right? And this would actually kind of make sense. And here's why, right? 
I drove at the time a Honda CRV, right? This was after I'd crashed my old Accord, and this was my mom's car. This was not my car, right? I didn't pay for a CRV. I did not own a CRV, especially in this color, but uh, either way. So, you know, it, it was like one of those kind of open back things. Like if you're sitting in the car, you can reach back and grab the trunk. So it makes sense. Whenever I got in that car, I'd throw my jacket in the trunk and I'd throw my bag in the trunk. You know, that's just what I do. And I did actually have a backpack in the trunk. So it kind of worked out. So, you know, what I ended up doing was we pulled up to his house maybe 30 minutes later, right? And me and Kevin are getting ready for this. I'm driving Kevin sitting shotgun. Plan is Kevin's going to take the money. As soon as we tell him like, oh yeah, it's in the trunk. I'll pop it for you. We're just going to fucking step on it, right? We're just going to step on it. So, you know, things didn't quite go as planned as you could imagine. Because this was a pretty terrible plan, right? Like we did not think this through very far. But we were just like, whatever, we'll probably get away with it. So what we end up doing is we, we pull up to his crib, right? He comes out, pulls up to the passenger window, right? He doesn't get in the car. And I made sure that we got the memo across that he's not getting in the car. Because if he got in the car, then we were either going to have to beat the shit out of him or we were going to have to just hold an L, you know? Like, there there was really not many other options we had, you know? Like, we can't just be like, yo, dude, uh, sorry, but we actually came to rob you and we didn't expect you to get in the car. So if you wouldn't mind getting out, that would be dope. Thank you. You know, like, we can't just say that. We got we to gotta do something different. So we made sure that, you know, I rolled the window down when we pulled up to kind of give him the signal, like, yeah, you're not getting in. I locked the doors just in case. And he didn't try to get in, so it worked out pretty good. Comes up to the window. We both shake his hand, you know, play all, all good with him. And at this point, he seemed pretty desperate for some bud, right? Like, by, by judging by his story and his tweets that day, he seemed pretty fucking pissed off that day and pretty desperate for some weed, right? Which is probably the only reason he allowed me to serve him, because this guy did not like me, and I was pretty shocked that he even answered. But I was also like, this kid's like an absolute idiot, and there's no way he's like reverse finessing me here. He's definitely gonna have the 40. So, either way... You know, he comes up to the window and I do the classic maneuver. I pop the glove box open and I hand him that little bag and I'm like, yeah, you know, I got the rest in, uh, in the back in my bag, you know, and this is just a little bit of it to take a look, uh, if you like it. So, you know, he looks at the bag a little bit and there's only like a gram in there and he's like, all right, cool, dude. And without even hesitating, you know, he's like reaching into his pocket for the money. So I tell him like, and Kevin kind of throws this in. This was a good touch. Kevin's like, yo, you got the bread. And he's like, oh, yeah, here. And I'm like, you want to do me a favor? My bag's in the trunk. It's got my butt in it. It's got the rest of my butt in it. Excuse me. Can you go, you know, grab it? I'll pop the trunk. And this is, you know, this is where things kind of go awry, right? I, I, don't, I think this was probably my fault and also my mistake on this finesse. But I figured as soon as the money's in my hand, why even continue, you know, like why even bother proceeding with this ruse, you know? And I didn't expect what he did next. What I did was as soon as he handed the money to Kevin, right? I hadn't popped my trunk for him to go quote unquote, grab the butt out of my bag or whatever, but he handed the money to Kevin first. And as soon as I did, I put the car back and drive and I whipped it, right? And I, when I pulled up, I made sure to park the car, make it look like it wasn't going to skirt off on him, like it wasn't in a hurry or anything, you know? I, I tried to make it look as legit as possible. So I whipped the car back and drive. And I think he noticed this. I think he noticed this because he stopped, like, he, he was almost motioning as if he was about to go back to the trunk and grab it. But as soon as I shifted the car into drive, he stopped and he stayed at the window. And I just gunned it. And I expected him to just, like, stand there. But he didn't. He grabs on to the window frame, right? Because the window is still rolled down and Kevin's still sitting there. He's hanging on to the side of the window frame, the back side, literally hanging off my car. We, Like, I kid you not, we are dragging this kid through a pretty wealthy suburban neighborhood on the side of my car. And he's screaming. This kid's shouting. He's like, stop the fucking car. He's like, give me my fucking money. And I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my God, like, what the fuck do we even do? And... Kevin's doing his best to try to like pry his fingers off the car, but I'm also trying to do my best to not go very fast. Like I'm trying to go fast enough to get out quickly, but not so fast that we hurt the guy, right? Because I'm like, all right, this is like 10 times more serious the moment that he goes to the hospital, right? Like if he's not injured, this is not a big deal. But if we actually hurt this guy, then we're in some deep shit, right? If, if anything happens, we're pretty fucked. So you know, what I ended up doing was we got to the corner, you know, and you could only go left or right at this corner at the end of his street. 
and I slowed down pretty slow for the turn. And it was timed almost perfectly. Me and Kevin executed this to a T. As soon as I slowed down and whipped the turn, right? Kevin managed to pry his last fingers off that fucking window frame and whip him off the car. And luckily, I turned fairly close to the curb. I did this on purpose. I made sure that I tried to stay close to the curb so when he fell off the car, he'd fall onto the grass and not fuck his shit up. Because I was really trying to think like, damn, dude. Like, what if this just goes even worse? Like, what if I also get popped, you know? What if I also get in trouble for this? I don't want to get charges for fucking him up. I'd rather just deal with the charge of fucking taking his $40, which I know he wouldn't snitch on if it was just for weed. But the moment he got hurt, then parents would get involved, and then shit goes south, you know? So, either way, you know, I kind of whip this turn, and I'm really hugging the curb here. I'm pretty sure I I actually curbed my wheels now that I think about it. And as I do that, Kevin whips him off the car. Kevin finally gets him off and he falls down, right? And we look back and he got back up. He starts getting back up. So I'm like, all right, he's not fucking dead. We're good. You know, we're fine. And he's kind of running after the car a little bit. Like not a little bit at all, actually. This guy was like pretty full fledged, like marathon sprinting after the car. And I don't know why he did that. Cause that's not a winning race for him, but either way, we, we finally got out of this neighborhood, got the fuck out of there, and immediately, immediately after, he starts bombing my Snapchat, starts bombing my fucking Snapchat, so I open the snaps, and he's just like, what the fuck, bro, like, what was that, fuck you, dude, I'll beat your fucking ass, so I just ignored it, I didn't even answer, but I didn't block him, because it was kind of like entertainment, right, so now we had our 40 bucks, and everything was golden, right, everything was beautiful, worked out great, guy was a complete dickhead to everybody so in my opinion I think it was justified and it worked out it worked out for everybody I mean hey he may have lost his $40 all right but he gained insight right he gained knowledge on what not to do in his next drug deal you know always get in the car if they pull up always every time get in the car but either way that's all I got for you guys today hope you guys did enjoy drop a like if you did I'll see you guys next time peace